sunk in on any level, Rick? Uh, oh, that it's over has sunk in, yeah. Um, it's been a pretty long, tough week, I guess. Um, I think I've been, I know I've been more nervous um, this game than any other, any other game that I've played, uh, just for the reason that, you know, how much it means to me to play for Australia and wanting to finish the right way. So uh, it has been a hard week and um, we haven't got the result that we were after and I haven't got the result that I was after. And, um, you know, I guess even now, I said to you before the, the game that we'd have some time to reflect on things, but I think I've just been wrapped up in the game and wrapped up in the moment that I haven't really had a chance to, to think about anything else other than trying to get some runs. And, um, you know, but, you know, it's been a, looking back, it's been a special week as well, you know, um, having my whole family here has been great and you know, unbelievable support from them and great support from the fans and great support from my teammates and stuff. So uh, it's been a, been a special week. Oh, I think I'd, I was comfortable with the decision before this game anyway. I, I just, I, I, within my own mind, knew it was the right time to be, um, to be, to be walking away. Um, I just probably had a bit more of a fairy tale ending in my own eyes than what's, uh, than what's happened this week. And still, things are going badly for me here now as well. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's been one of those weeks, I guess. Um, Ricky, are you able to? between how you were batting, leading into this series and, and how you've played during it? Is, is it as simple as just the big the gulf between the two levels or has something gone? Uh, no, I, yes, there is a gulf between the two levels. There's no doubt about that. But I think, um, uh, you know, excluding probably Brisbane, um, I just think I've put, and probably the start of Adelaide, I thought I got a pretty good ball to start of the Adelaide game. Um, and then from there, uh, I've just felt that I've, you know, really put a lot of pressure on myself to perform knowing that I had to, um, or feeling within, within myself that I had to. Um, also knowing where the series was at, you know, it, it's always been about big games and big series for me. And, um, you know, getting off of the start that I did with those first two innings um, just had me, you know, under pressure again. And I haven't haven't been able to deal with it as well of late as I, I would have liked to. So, um, you know, and as I've said a couple of times already this week, normally for me when those big moments come around or when I've been under pressure, I've been able to find something and, and um, you know, find something within and go out and score runs and, and make it all go away. But I haven't been able to do that for a while now and that was when um, the alarm bell started to ring. Ricky, the, there's mythology that um, Bradman was misty-eyed when he went out to bat for the last time, but how did you feel walking out to bat last time with the crowd and then the, the guard of honour from the South Africans as well? Was it actually hard to focus on the, on the moment? Uh, yeah, I mean, that caught me by surprise. I mean, the ovation, not so much, because you know, even in Adelaide, when they didn't know it was going to be my last game down there, I got a great ovation there, and Nathan Lyon got a great ovation the other day when he went out to bat. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I got my big ovation today. Um, but, you know, Graham's gesture on the, and the South African boys' gesture was, uh, you know, that, that sort of stuff will rem remain with me forever. And I told him that on the field today. Um, so that was, that was special. Was I, you know, I was pretty pumped up for the moment. You know, I, I, I just felt that there was one last, you know, big push from me. And the game and the day was sort of set up for it. And um, it didn't last long enough. So, um, yeah, but I'll, even out of today... You know, only being at the crease for 20 odd balls or whatever it was, it's um, you know a pretty special time, and I think everyone that's that's retired has no doubt felt um, felt that as well. Um, just would have been nice to have a few more next to my name coming off. Yeah. Ricky, um, concentrate. Are you experiencing any relief now that it's it's over? Uh, not yet, no, no, not yet. Um, as I said, just the all, all the emotions that are sort of going through me now, and I guess the. Uh, the realisation of the finality of it all, um, even, you know, just the feeling in our dressing room now as well. We know that, um, you know, one well, one poor day um, probably in the entire series has, has, cost us a, has cost us a series and cost us a chance to get to, to number one in the world, which we all have worked so hard for and wanted so much. Um, but that's test cricket, you know, you've got to take your opportunities when they present themselves and we had some opportunities in, in Adelaide, obviously, to... to to get a win and go one nil up, and you know it might have been a different feeling for me, me here right now. Um, but uh, I think it's going to take a little while for me. Like I've, it's all going to be pretty rushed the next couple of days. I'm straight out of here, and you know pretty much straight into Hobart, straight into Big Bash, finish the rest of the season for Tassie. It probably won't be until the end of the, the Tasmanian um, summer that I'll have a chance to really let it all sort of sink in and and um, you know just think about 
a lot of those things, good and bad, that have happened throughout my career. Um, and there have been, there've been plenty of both, um, but it's been an amazing ride. Ricky, you're often bracketed with uh, Lara and Tendulkar as the you know, best batsman of your era. Did, did, did you have one who you felt was the supreme batsman of your era? And also, secondly, uh, who did you consider was the best bowler you faced? Yeah, look, I, I think I've probably been on record before as saying that I felt Sachin was probably the, the best player that I've, I played against. Um, and that's probably, that's probably coming from a more of a, a captain's point of view as well, knowing that he had so much success against us uh, in our conditions mm -hmm. and their conditions. Um, but the other way to look at it is I probably lost more sleep on the eve of games against Lara because I knew that he could single-handedly win games for his team. And I think if you, you know, it my, the way that I judge players is, is always been on their ability to win games and win games by themselves. And, and Lara could certainly do that. Um, and he probably did it more than what Sachin's done it for India. So and it's hard to separate the class of player, those two guys. And I mean, you've got to put Callis in that bracket as well. And, he put his wickets on top of what he's done with the bat. I mean, he came out about the other day and he looked at the board and he's averaging 57 in Test cricket. I mean, that's that's remarkable considering, um, you know, the amount that he's had to bowl and, and all that sort of stuff as well. Um, so, yeah, I've been, I guess, pretty blessed to have played in the, the era that I've played with so many great players and so many great batsmen playing in that era. And, um, you know, if my name gets mentioned amongst them, then that's great. Um, as far as the bowlers... I probably, uh, I think, was a Macram and Kirtley Ambrose, probably the two outstanding quicks that I faced. Um, Ambr and for different reasons. Ambrose, for his ability just to make you feel like he couldn't score off him for long periods of time and never felt like he was going to bowl you a bad ball. And, and Akram, for the exact opposite, you, you, you could get a few runs off him, but you just knew that there was a, an unplayable ball around the corner, be it with an old ball or with a new ball. So, and probably thankfully for me, I probably got both of those guys towards the end of their careers as well. So... Um, yeah, I think those two, and, and I mean, Harbour John's the other one that probably caused me as much, uh, as much grief <laughs> as, uh, <laughs> as much as anything. He got me out a lot of times and caused me a lot of grief. So, um, yeah, those guys uh, through their careers could probably all put their hand up and say they had my measure. Uh, not that you guys wouldn't have on the, on the front of your minds, I'm sure. Um, I guess... You know, I've just been pretty wrapped up in my own game the last couple of weeks to not think too much. I mean, I'm Rob, Rob Quine is the obvious one, having come into the series. And, you know, he didn't perform the way he would have liked, but, you know, he's obviously the first choice batsman going into, into um, to Brisbane. Um, you know, I know that Hughes and, and Kawaja are out there scoring runs um, almost every game they play now. And, you know, that was a point I made in the press conference before the game as well. It's actually really... It's really good to see those, those guys, um, you know, putting their hand up for selection. And, um, yeah, whichever way... You know, the selectors decide to go with any three of those guys. I honestly can't see it probably coming outside of those three. Maybe Alex Doolan's name might get mentioned there somewhere as well for you know, the big hundred he got, got against South Africa a couple of weeks ago. But whichever way they decide to go, I'm pretty confident that you know, we know that Hughes can p perform at this level. Um, we've seen Kawaja briefly at, at international level as well, and he's obviously probably in the form of his life right now. So uh, whichever way they go, you can guarantee you'll have a good replacement for me. Uh, 17 years of, of test cricket, a lot of ups and downs. Do you have any regrets, anything you'd do differently? No, not at all. I don't live my life thinking about regrets. I just, um, you know, day in and day out, I've, I've got up and tried to make myself a better, a better person and a better, better dad and, and a better player. Um, and as you can see, I've got some work to do with one of those. <laughs> um, which I'll enjoy, won't I? Um, but no, no regrets. I mean, they're... You know, any decision you make as a player or a or a captain, you you put a lot of, lot of thought into making any decision that you make. Um, and you know, the result of the game or the result of one innings or the result of one spell generally determines whether you've made a good decision or not as a captain. So, um, you know, I'll stand by every decision that I've made um, on or off the field, or most of them anyway, um, through my through my time. And honestly, looking back, I don't think I changed too much. Right, uh, Ricky, when you made that decision and what you're thinking now, what what was it you thought you'd miss most? Uh, I'll miss the mateship. I'll miss the dressing room. That's, um, that's the stuff that's irreplaceable in your life, I guess. Um, yeah, there's a lot of guys in there I'm pretty or very close to. And um, I guess a lot of the guys that I've been closest to over the years are no longer around the dressing room either. So, I mean, I guess that's the upside. I'll probably get to spend a bit more time with, with those guys that I've uh, played most of my cricket with. Um, yeah, but just, um, you know, just the... 
the get up sort of attitude and, and find a way to make yourself better and try and find a way to make your teammates better, I think, is what I miss. Um, Ricky, uh, you've played in uh, and captained a lot of dominant Australian teams. What do you think about this South African team? Can they, can they dominate cricket? Oh, I think they are, and they have. I mean, the fact that they've beaten um, us at home and England at home in the last couple of series they've played goes to show that they're, they are um, dominating world cricket now. I mean, if you, it's... I mean, dominating is a pretty strong word, I guess, because that probably means extend, extended um, periods of excellence. Um, but South Africa, I guess, have always been up and, and amongst the top two or three teams in the world. Um, and it's only been of, of late that they've really, uh, they've re really risen to the, the top and probably been clearly the best team. Um, and they are a very good cricket team. We knew that coming into the series. We knew that we had to play our absolute best to win the series. And, you know, to tell the truth, truth we probably did that for... Uh, for how many days we played, probably 13 of the 14 days in this, in this, or yeah, 12 of the 13 days we missed one in Brisbane as well. But we've played really well and we've come up short. But that, you know, that indicates just how good South and how resilient they've been as well. I mean, they, their their performance in Adelaide to do what they did and, and withstand everything um, that we could throw at them, you know, albeit a bowler down, was still a pretty remarkable effort and. Uh, you know, we've seen before in other series where teams hanging on for a, a draw like that can quite often be the, the turning point. It's happened to us in Ashes series before. Um, they've obviously taken a whole lot more out of the Adelaide game than we did. Um, they've turned up this game and, and you know, the cricket that they played day two um, with the ball first and foremost, but the way they batted that afternoon, I mean, that was, that was them trying to imp impose themselves on the series and they did it better than I've ever seen any team take a game away from an opposition team before. Um, a lot of other teams that we've played against over the years that have been in a position like that have been too scared to, to do that and push the game forward. And I think that's a, what they did the other day was a, a sign that they had total belief in what they were doing. Um, they were well planned. They are obviously well um, prepared in the way they wanted to go out there and play their cricket. And they put us under more pressure with the bat that afternoon and with the ball in the morning than I think we've been under in a long time. So they thoroughly deserve to walk away the, the winners of this series. Do you have a plan for sitting down and watching the tests in Hobart next week? Yeah, I will, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, you ask the boys in the, in the dressing room, they reckon I don't miss a ball that's bowled anywhere around the world. Um, and, yeah, of course, I'll keep an eye on it because, I, you know, I'll, I'll miss not being out there. Um, you know, I'll be interested to see who comes in and slots into the number four spot and, obviously, I'll be interested to see who's, uh, what the bowling attack looks like for, for Hobart. And... Um, yeah, the way it works out, I'll probably be down there anyway. I've, I've got some training to do for the Hurricanes leading up to that game, so I'll probably be in Hobart uh, just before that. Um, who knows, I might even be around for the first day of the game. So if, if I am, um, yeah, I might even join him in the warm-up with the boys and see if there's just one more chance. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Yeah, I've got, um, firstly, uh, I've got a lot of people that I need to thank, and there's a few of them sitting over in the corner there that uh, have been incredible over the last uh, few years. Haven't you? Um, now my wife and uh, and my family have been great supporters and given up a lot to to let me try and uh, you know achieve the things that I've achieved in this game. So um, without them, it wouldn't have happened. <clears throat> um, my extended family's here as well, and it's been great to have them here. They're not. Uh, <clears throat> Not ones that have travelled much around the world to watch me play, but um, it's been uh, it's been great. Mum and Dad's support over the years has been uh, remarkable, and I wouldn't have obviously be here without the opportunities that I was given at an early age by them. So uh, <clears throat> it's getting a bit harder. Um, uh, Cricket Australia for their support over what's been 17 years have been uh, amazing. Um, as you've all said, I've had my ups and downs, and uh, but never had uh, anything but support from people that matter. So, um, yeah, look, I'm thankful to them. I'm thankful to the Cricket Tasmania for their support, the opportunities I was given from them, and my my home club, the Maybury Cricket Club. If they see me uh, up here doing this right now, they're going to be um, they'll be all over me. My phone will be running mad at the moment, I guess. But um, yeah, that's you know that's the place I learnt uh, the game and. Um, you know, the person I am was sort of moulded uh, from, from my background and my upbringing. So what you've seen over 17 years is, uh, is a result of, um, of my, uh, my early days at the Mowbray Cricket Club. So thanks to the boys back there. Um, 
obviously to, uh, to, to you guys, the media, um, have done a great job covering my career and uh, covering cricket in Australia. And, um, you know, the boys will continue to get out there and try and, uh, try and put on the best show that they can. And we obviously appreciate, you know, everything that you guys do to promote the game and, and even to promote players. We understand that you're doing a job and, you know, we're there to be criticised at times. But I think, um, you know, some of the young guys now just might need a little bit of patting on the back every now and then as well and giving a bit of a push along because it's a pretty hard thing that we do. So um, keep covering the game well, um, as you have done for a long time. And um, thanks for what you've done for me through my time as well. Um, uh, all of my, uh, you know, my personal sponsors and supporters over the years um, and my management team around me that have made my cricket life that little bit easier. Um, it's been a pretty tough job managing, you know, everything off the field to make sure that I'm a, a chance to play good cricket on the field. Um, my manager's done a great job there. To all the support staff around Cricket Australia, I've worked with a lot of them over the years, obviously. Um, but we've, uh, you know, we've always had great people in place and around the team. And I'm, go I'm sure you guys would... Uh, would would say the same thing and um, yeah I think uh, you know I just hope I've left the team in a, a better place than it was when I when I started I think every player that comes into international cricket or international sport wants to say that they can walk away with uh, the the place being and the team being in a, in a in a better place than it was and hopefully my impact and input on Australian cricket has left some behind so thank you.